what is a dawah to salafiyya is it a sect or is it an, or is it a group and the answer is just as dawah to salafiyya is a term that is utilized then the same question is asked regarding what is ahlu sunnati wal jama'a or a person may ask what is ahlul hadith or ashabul hadith these are terminologies all of them ahlu sunnah wal jama'a or as salafiyya or sunni or salafi these are terms that have been used by the scholars of the earliest of times these are not newly invented terminologies that just came about in the last four years or the last 20 years well some of the people claim that they came about over the last hundred years the term salafi and salafiyya is not 100 years old or 200 years old it did not begin somewhere in the desert in the middle of saudi arabia in the 12th century the term salafiyya is a term that is that defines a group of people in the language as even mandur rahimahullah mentions and i'll keep it as simple as possible and as brief as possible that the term salaf refers to those who came before you salaf salih refers to the best of those who came before you or the righteous ones who came before you when the term salaf is used in terms of the religion as this great scholar of the arabic language mentioned ibn mandur al afriqi he mentioned that when you use the term salaf as it relates to the religion then it refers back to the companions of Allah, the Messenger of Allah and his companions radiallahu anhum. So when we say who are the Salaf, then we are referring back to the companions. And if one wishes to generalize further, then there is no harm if one includes in that the generations, the, few, the small amount of generations or the three generations or the four generations that came after. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned khairun nas qarni thumma alladheena yalunahum thumma alladheena yalunahum that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the best of mankind is my generation and then those who come after them and then those who come after them. So you find, for example, many of the scholars of later times, even Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Asul sunnah which is the great work of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal in the field of Aqeedah and, and methodology, that he mentions in that work that our Salaf, those who came before us, Imam Tirmidhi in his Kitab sunnah the Salaf, Used to, that the Salafu Salih of this Ummah, meaning the righteous predecessors of this Ummah who came before us, that they used to have their Aqeedah, that they used to take the names and attributes of Allah upon their apparent. And they used, to, used not to make metaphors with regard to the names and attributes of Allah, nor did they used to deny them. And uses the term Imam Tirmidhi, who died in the year 279, the term Salaf. And likewise, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, as has been reported by Imam al Suyuti in Sonul Mantaq, that Imam al Suyuti mentions. Upon Imam Abu Hanifa, that Imam Abu Hanifa said, stick to the tariqah of the Salaf. Stick to the way of the Salaf. And Imam Abu Hanifa, as you know, is the great scholar and the great Imam who died in the year 150. So the term is not a new term. In fact, the Prophet وسلم, said to Fatima radiallahu anha, his beloved daughter in the hadith that is reported in Sahih Muslim, he said to Fatima, I am to you a blessed Salaf. So the term has been in existence as long as Islam. So some, a, a brother asked me recently, he said to me, Akhi, you know, Salafiyya, is it, the, is it a new madhab? Is it the last madhab? We say no. Salafiyya is the first madhab. Because the Salaf are the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, in the time of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So it is not to be seen as a new madhab. Rather, it is the ancient madhab. It is a madhab that combines all of the imams of the earliest times. It combines all of the companions of the earliest times. So much so that imam, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he mentioned لا عيب على من أذهر مذهب السلف that there is no criticism upon the one who makes apparent the madhab of the salaf and he ascribes to it and he affiliates himself with it rather it is to be accepted from him بالاتفاق it is to be accepted from him by the complete consensus of the Muslims and this is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah we are now what in the 15th century this is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in the, se in the 7th and 8th century, over 7 centuries ago, mentioning a consensus of regarding the one who ascribes himself to the madhab of the Salaf. That he says, I am Salafi. He says rather, there is n that in, with regard or in, uh, in the madhab of the Salaf, there is nothing except the haqq. The madhab of the Salaf is nothing but the truth. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said that my ummah will never unite upon misguidance. 
When you use the term Salaf, you are talking about a body of individuals. You are not talking about one person. You are talking about a body, a group of individuals that united could never be mistaken. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, my ummah will not unite upon misguidance. So you are attaching yourself to something that could never go astray collectively. So when a person says, I am Salafi, then he is not saying that he is a companion. No, rather he's saying that I follow the companions because the I in the English language or the Ya in the Arabic, the Ya Nisbi, or the Ya that connects, signifies that you are connecting yourself to something. When a person says to you, where are you from? You say, I'm from Pakistan. He says to you, oh, mashallah, you're Pakistani. He adds an I or he makes a Ya in the Arabic language at the end. You ask a person, where are you from? He says, I'm from Sudan. You say, oh, mashallah, you're Sudani. You say to a person, you follow the Salaf. You say, yes. He says, mashallah, you're Salafi. So the I doesn't mean that he is that thing. It means that he connects himself to it. And he associates himself with it. And the one who does so in truth, in truth, then that person is true to his claim. The one who does so falsely, then he's false to his claim. Like for example, you find a like, person, he says that I'm a Sunni. What's a Sunni doing? He's connecting himself to what? To the Sunnah. That's why he calls himself Sunni. The Ya is the Ya of connection. Or the I at the end connects him to the Sunnah. But now you find that person, he opposes in everything he does, he opposes the Sunnah. Is he truly a Sunni? Of course he's not. Because he has opposed the Sunnah. So his claim to Sunni is a false claim. And you find people like this even who say that we are Salafi. But it's a false claim and they give Salafi a bad name. But that is not, that, that, that should not give us an excuse now to label all of the Salafis or label Ibn Taymiyyah. Oh, Ibn Taymiyyah was Salafi, all you Salafis are... What are you going to say, Ibn Taymiyyah was bad? What are you going to say, Imam Abu Hanifa, when he said stick to the tariqah of the Salaf? What are you going to say about the great scholar? Uh, uh, the sahib of, uh, or the author of Al-Ansab, Imam Al-Sam'ani, rahimahullah ta'ala. That he mentioned, and he died in the year 571 after the Hijrah. Dates are important to the Salafi, to the person of Sunnah. Why? Because now he can look at his history. And when a person says, oh, Salafi, there you came about 25 years ago. We've never seen you before that. Say, no, Imam al samani 571. Imam Abu Hanifa, 150. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, 241. Imam, al Imam uh, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, 181 after the Hijrah. All of them use the term Salaf. Imam al samani said that there was a group of people who came before us and they used to have an intisab. They used to connect themselves to the Salaf. They used to call themselves Salafi. So, the, so this laqab was present, or this connection, or this nomenclature was present in the time of the earlier generations. So it is not something new. Now the question arises, why would a person now, why don't you just call yourself Muslim? Should we not just call us, isn't that what the name that Allah gave us in the Quran, Muslim? We say yes, but the term Muslim is a broad term. It is a broad term that includes the one who is upon the straight path and the one who is upon the deviated path. It includes the one who who worships at the graves and calls upon the dead in their graves and the one who looks at the stars for fortune telling, the one who looks at astrology, all of them claim to be Muslim. The one who believes that his Iman is like the Imam, Iman of Muhammad وسلم, and Jibreel and he never goes up and down the Murjia. The one who claims that it is permissible to kill Ali radiallahu anhu, like the Khawarij, they regarded themselves to be Muslims and upon the truth. So a person calls himself and distinguishes himself with a title. Does it have to be Salafi? Then no. In the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they used the term Sunnah or Ahlu Sunnah. And they used to, term the, used, to, used to use the term Jama'ah, even though it wasn't used previous to that. Ahlu Sunnah wasn't used previous to that. But the Sahaba, they utilized it. And the person says, but where is it from the Prophet sallallahu this distinction? Then there are many examples in the life of the Prophet sallallahu that he that he would not use the term Muslim because the term Muslim encompasses everyone who enters into Islam. But he would distinguish a group of Muslims and give them a special title. Prophet ﷺ himself, proof. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said that my ummah will divide into 73 sects, all of them into the hellfire except for one, and they are the jama'ah. He didn't say they are the Muslims. He said they are the jama'ah. In a narration that is reported by Abu, uh, Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, he mentioned, that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that, that the Ummah will divide into 73 sects, all of them into the hellfire except for one, and it is Aswadul A'zam. He called them the main body. He didn't call them Muslims. That when the Muslims divide into 73 sects, one of the, all of them are in the hellfire except for one. 
And he didn't call them Muslims. They are Muslims, of course. In fact, all of the 73 are Muslims. But the one that he distinguished, he gave them a title. He called them Aswadul Adam, the main body. Or he called them Al Jama'ah. In a narration, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, and when he was asked the question by the companions, and he did not criticize them. When the Prophet, when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the splitting of the Ummah, the companions said, Wama hiya tilqa al firqa, which is this one firqa, sect. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma'ana alayhi liyom wa ashabi. That which I and my companions are upon. So the companions, they use the term in front of the Prophet ﷺ, firqa, firqa tun najiya. It is the saved sect. So these are terminologies that the Prophet ﷺ himself used. It also reminds me of another hadith when the Prophet ﷺ said that Islam began as something gharib. Huh? It will return as something gharib just as it began as something strange and it will return as something strange just as it began. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked by his companions, who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Right? And uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, وَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى so the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Islam began as something strange, it will return just as it began as something strange. So tuba or glad tidings of paradise or a tree in paradise is for the strangers. He didn't say for the Muslims. He said for the ghuraba. So you find many, many hadith of the Prophet ﷺ not using the term Muslim, but using ghuraba, aswadul adam, al jamaa, And Abdullah ibn Abbas using the term Ahlul Sunnah. Ali radiallahu anhu using the term jamaa. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, when he's asked, who is the saved sect? He said, if they are not Ashabul Hadith, if they are not the companions of Hadith, I don't know who they are. So you find this constantly occurring. So we say that the Dawah to Salafiyya is a call to the way of the companions in the command of the Prophet Sallallahu That which I and my companions are upon. It is a call to that. Not everyone who claims to be Salafi is true to that call, admittedly. I agree with you because there are people out there who say we are Salafi and they are the furthest thing from being Salafi. But there are people out there who are Sunni and they are the furthest thing from Sunnah. It's possible to find that. So the distinction is a distinction of connection and connecting oneself to the truth and it is accepted by the ulama by consensus. By consensus as Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned. And that briefly answers that point. What is Akumullah khair? Uh, we told the point we need to round up. Uh, just to add to that, oftentimes, oftentimes if one, uh, we have individuals saying, well, this term salaf is not in the Quran or it's not in the Sunnah, so why use it if it's not in the Quran or not in the Sunnah? And no doubt the term salaf is in the Quran and likewise in the Sunnah. We have the, the likes of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَنْكِهُ مَا نَكَحَ آبَاؤُكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ إِلَّا مَا قَدْ سَلَفْ don't marry those women who your forefathers have married except that which has salaf, except that which has passed. And likewise, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَوْعِذَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ فَانْتَهَا فَلَهُمَا سَلَفِ And whosoever there comes to them an admonition from his Lord concerning riba, concerning usury, then for him is that which has salaf. Does it occur in the sunnah? Na'am. Hadith in Sahih Muslim, when, where in Fatima radiallahu anha, when she was at the side of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani prior to his death and when he was in his marad maut or the death that he passed away in sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she began to cry seeing the state of her father and so when she began to cry the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he said fear Allah and be patient for indeed I am a blessed salaf for you in the hadith in Sahih Muslim so it is something that is utilized. The only issue is maybe in, in recent times, it is something its usage has become rare and is being revitalized in this time. But it is not something, brothers and sisters, that has been...